hi, I didn't see you there. Well, while you're here, I want to let you know that today's show is brought to you by the extremely kind donations by our donors over at Patreon. <laughs> Andrew, why don't you tell us a little bit about Patreon? Well, Patreon is a site you can go to if you'd like to donate to us and get a little bit of extra content. We have after parties for some episodes. We have full commentaries that we release. Um, we just did one on High School Musical. Oh, yeah, and that's a that was an absolute classic. <laughs> um, our commentary was was pretty funny, I think. But I thought we did a pretty good job. It's a jungle out here. <laughs> it's it's a jungle in here. Uh, why don't you uh, Why don't you run through our current patrons, Jess? Well, our current patrons are Stephanie L, Terry Diedelman, Max Lunig, Benjamin Lear, Lily Ackles, Mackenzie Horner, John Donna, Taryn the Duck, Melissa Goldman, Jess Lightning, Ewan Cassidy, Haley McDonald, Tasker, Cal McLeod, Mina Maniri. Monica Thoreau, Brent Black, Haley Murray, Allison Wonderland, B Way Flicks, Michael Johan, Nathaniel Stacy, Coombe, Joseph Evans Green, Uregel Duvray, Witter, William Want, and Carrie Ahrem. And just a shout out to Lily Ackles, who uh, increased her amount that she donates to us. You're, you're the best, Lily. We love you. But all these folks give us a little extra financial support that helps us keep the lights on here at Musicals with Cheese. If you'd like to join them and get a bunch of fun crap, come join us over at Patreon. All right, Andrew, are you ready to get the show started for Rizzle? Oh, yes. Hello, I'm Jesse McAnow. And I'm Andrew DeWolf. And welcome to Musicals with Cheese, a podcast where I try to get Andrew to like musical theater. How are you doing today, Andrew? Uh, I'm doing quite well. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant to say, I'm doing quite well. Oh, why'd you do it in that voice? I'm a girl now. <laughs> you need to add the southern accent. I can't do a southern accent. Well, what should I call you then? Uh, call me Andrew. <laughs> but, like, that's my last name, though. I'm now... The Wolf Andrews. The Wolf Andrews. Well, that's uh, that's such a pretty name, Mr. Wolf Andrews. Thank you. I, w- I want to see if, how long we can get you to do it like this. I think we might be falling in love. Oh, no. no. Well, I, I'm a girl. I'm a girl, too. That doesn't happen in the show. Well, here it is, because the two girls fall in love, and it's really weird. Shut up, Jess. We're doing Tootsie. <laughs> or Tootsie ended it up. Tootsie rap. Uh, we're doing Tootsie to- We're doing Tootsie. I won't let you down. Whatever you want me to be. You give me your trust. I give you my word. I won't let you down. Nobody sees me and nobody listens and nobody cares. I won't let you down. That's good. Thank you. Because you believe in me. Because you're the one who can see. I'm here and alive. I won't let you down. Because when I felt empty inside... Tootsie is a musical comedy with music and lyrics by David Yazbek and a book by Robert Horn. The musical is based on the 1982 American comedy film of the same name, written by Larry Gelbert and Barry Levinson, um, and a bunch of other people. The musical made its world premiere at the, at the Cadillac Palace Theater in Chicago in September of 2018. Like the film, the musical tells the story of a talented actor that's also volatile, whose reputation who, for being difficult forces him to adopt a new identity as a woman in order to land a job. The original movie revolved around a daytime soap opera, while the show involves... What would you guess, Andrew? A Broadway musical! I mean, I don't have to guess. I've seen it, but yes, Broadway musicals. I mean, I mean, I mean... A Broadway show about Broadway? It's never been... Never. Never been done. Never been done. (laughs) Never. (laughs) Um, I... I'm very glad that in this description that you wrote out, we we left out the horrible lead actor of the original film, Tootsie. Who who is it? Um, he doesn't exist, so it doesn't matter. I, I now I need to know who is it. I, I've he's never. A, he's a bad man who doesn't exist. Either way, Andrew, you just watched Tootsie. Yeah, like five minutes ago, I finished. 
Oh yeah. Well, what did you think? What is your first thoughts? Because this is this is fresh. This is mm. fresh thoughts well, from Andrew. The only way to describe Tootsie is as an absolute hoot. It is <laughs> hilarious. So funny. I was rolling on the ground laughing. And like, I go outside and walk out the theater and there's posters of white people laughing. I was raffling the whole time. <laughs> I'm going to go on Twitter <laughs> to say this. What an absolute hoot. <laughs> it's a hoot. That's the only word I could think of when watching it. Is like, there's people, there's probably critics out there that are describing this as a hoot. It got pretty decent critical <laughs> cl- acclaim is the thing. I didn't find almost any of the jokes funny. There's very, very few of them that were kind of like, oh, I guess that's a little, that's okay. The that's, chuckle. I found it chuckle worthy at best. Yeah, and then, like, there's a lot of jokes that just fell totally flat, and it was just like, Wah. And then the audience, ah! <laughs> <laughs> It's just like, I'm waiting for the, the sad trombone to play. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, I gave a really, like, basic description of the plot. Please, in your best Andrew DeWolf way, tell us what happens in Tootsie the Musical. All right, so the guy who's, like, wondering why he can't get work because he is an actor that just goes on set and tries to direct the show he's in, essentially. Um, which I, I assume, I don't do acting work, but I, I'm pretty sure that's not what you're supposed to do as an actor. I um, mean, some people do it. It, it. It's like a diva ship. Yeah, well, if you're like a, a small-time actor looking for work, it's probably the best way to guarantee that you like never get it. you like working in the ensemble, yeah, fuck that. Probably the best way to guarantee you're never going to get a job. Um and so he's like told about this other show that his girl friend, a friend that is a girl, not his girlfriend. Ah, uh, that's impossible. Haven't seen when Harry met Sally. Girls who can't be friends with men. It's not it true. Yeah, happen. it's it's true. You're absolutely Definitely correct. Can't. You're absolutely correct. It's a weird thesis that that film makes. It's a true thesis that I'm making right now that you can't be friends with girls. Because they have, because we gotta no girls allowed sign. They have, they have, cooties, they have cooties in my no girls allowed sign is no more. No, no more. Not no let, more girl. Don't let the cooties in. But yeah, his friend that is a girl is also an actress, and she's telling him about this role, and he's like, I could get that role if I just put on a wig and a girl suit, and so he does that, and then the whole rest is that he becomes super popular and he wins an award. Is that, like, he actually wins an award right at the end, right? Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's nonsense. Um, no one can tell that it's a, it's a man in in drag. I, I, I mean, mean, like, even... When, I mean, they didn't even do that great a job of the makeup. Like, say what you will about Miss Doubtfire, that's pretty convincing. Like, that kind of... I would buy that as an older woman. Yeah, like, maybe. Although, I'd say if you're in close proximity with someone for that long, you're going to start noticing certain things. And it's you gonna make like, out with him, like, you're gonna feel some stubble. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, d- I don't think that it would be so believable that they would be able to do this, but okay. It's a, it's a story. It's funny. It's a, it's is, a, is it funny? It's an absolute hoot. <laughs> um, <laughs> can, you can put that on the poster if you want. Just write my name. A- an absolute hoot. <laughs> no, this show got, this show got canned. <laughs> um, there's a, no one went to fucking see it. Everyone started going to Beetlejuice because that actually made people laugh. I mean, that was actually funny. This is exactly. <laughs> this is like no edge at all. Can I tell you what happened with this musical? And I think it's so fucking hilarious. I didn't like, finish the with funniest... the plot yet. Oh, you're right. You're right. <laughs> okay, keep going with the plot. Um. So when she go, uh, he, when he goes as Dorothy to the new play, um, or musical, I guess it's a musical. Uh, he he just changes the entire story, and the director, I guess, is okay with it because I don't know why. The producer liked it. The producer it... liked it, I guess. Yeah. Um, it's a version of Romeo and Juliet, and they're gonna have it end where the where Romeo falls in love with the nurse. I mean, I'd watch it. I I I mean, I wouldn't be caught dead watching any version of Romeo and Juliet. That shit is a you snooze. You wouldn't be caught fe- dead seeing a musical. <laughs> that shit is a snooze fest. Shakespeare is garbage, and his writing is bland and boring. <laughs> God, he hates Shakespeare. You know, I really hate Shakespeare. <laughs> Even that was funnier than this. <laughs> By, like, a lot. <laughs> uh, keep going, there's still more plot to go. Okay, and then uh, he falls in love with 
what was her name? Jewel? Julie? Is it Julie? Something like that. Uh, which is the person playing Juliet. And then the whole rest of the story is just like one of those like, oh, I'm caught in a big lie. How do I cover up this lie? Oh my goodness, how do I continue to lie? I'll just tell more lies and then that will cover the lies. And I hate this type of story and it's the worst thing ever. And then we, I just like, just stop fucking lying. Okay, you know? You know, you just want to you just want to have it end and they don't lie anymore. And and of course, they never get their comeuppance really. It's just like all the lies come out and everyone hates him for like one scene and then he goes around and fixes everything and it's okay. now it's okay. It's like So is this like Dear Evan Hansen played as a comedy? Uh it's the same type of story where it's like Oh, I'm caught in all these lies. What do I do? Oh, I just tell more lies, and then that will fix it. <laughs> doesn't it have the basic ending of Dear Evan Hansen, where it was just like they needed a park bench, and she's like, "I don't know if I can forgive you," and he's like, "I can try to be better." And then, and then, like instantly, it's like, "Oh, I guess okay." <laughs> then a reprise of a song, and the show ends. Yeah. Yeah. It, it. It's. I mean, there's a lot of stories that are are this story in. I think they kind of all suck in their own ways. Um, <laughs> uh, so this one kind of sucks because it's written like a freaking sitcom. It's like it's like an episode of Friends, but played for three hours. <laughs> Was it really three hours? Uh, it's two and a half hours. That's too damn long for a show like this. Yeah, like if this was maybe like maybe two hours exactly or, or a little shorter even, maybe I could tolerate it, but it's... It's like a freaking, it's like a romantic comedy or like a, like a sitcom. But it's not even a good romantic comedy is the thing. You no. don't buy the romance between him and the, and Julie. Not at all. Not a bit. No. And it's just so, I don't know. It's, it's so absurd and ridiculous. It's like this, I don't think this could ever happen in real life. I, and I know you're going to say that this is like, me projecting and me using a phrase that I know you hate and I kind of hate, but this is like the boomer's boomer musical, like oh, oh, classic tropes and storytelling and about a guy that's in too deep over his head. How is he gonna get out? Oh, I mean, yeah, and they even tell like the the boomer style jokes where there's like, oh, I I hate my husband. Oh my goodness, there's nothing I hate more than my husband. I wish he was dead. It's like okay. <laughs> Uh, cool. That's like a total boomer joke, and I don't think anyone younger than like fifty would laugh at that. <laughs> I don't think that anyone under like fifty would enjoy this show. No, which is why I kept thinking of the word the whole time. I was just like, someone describes this as a hoot, because nobody under fifty <laughs> has ever said the word hoot. Um, you just did. <laughs> well, yeah, but I'm saying it uh, disingenuously, I, I suppose, or sarcastically facetiously facetiously i can't say that word my goodness i don't Jess. know how to say words yes Jess. Jess. Words are hard. people just give me money to talk and and i can't do that <laughs> <laughs> can i tell you what's funny about this musical and the production of it okay now that we've gone over the whole plot yes you can <laughs> yeah it ends he tells the truth and everyone forgives him for some reason he but... tells he tells the truth on like live television on a stage at the Tonys, I think is what is implied. I think it was like opening night or something. It's something ridiculous. Um, something ridiculous where it was like, why would you do this? Yeah, it's like, why would you do that then? Maybe just tell your, you know, close people first and then... Like, individualized, like, you don't have to make it a big thing, you know? Yeah, it's like you... You making it a big thing makes it even worse, because now it looks like it was like a publicity stunt or something like a that. A little bit. You <laughs> <laughs> but this show was... They had such hubris behind this show, honestly. Go on. Because... What do you got? <laughs> it opened the... Remember when we did the Tonys and I was very drunk? I do remember that. That was the same Tony year that this played, more or less. Um, and they were so convinced that this show was going to be, like, the next Book of Mormon. It was like, going to sweep. It, it, well, you know the difference between this and Book of Mormon is? Book of Mormon what? is, like, is like a spicy chili, you know? It's like, there is so much, like, edge and humor in that. And then this is, like, a piece of white toast that someone put butter on. <laughs> it's like, there's nothing edgy about this. There's nothing no, funny no, about it's... this. 
it's not even like that because you have your point, which is like like white toast that's barely been put into the toaster. Um, <laughs> But that when they pulled out, like there was some leftover diarrhea spilled <laughs> inside the toaster, so like there's just diarrhea spread throughout it. Well, I I mean you've already mentioned that the movie has like a little bit of controversy because of like well I mean the subject matter here is not exactly modern day friendly. I wouldn't say no, and nor is it a good joke. And it basically implies that women have a much be- grander opportunity to get roles than men, which is a weird. The funny thing is that they try to play up, like, the fact that they're woke or whatever in this. They're which, pretend woke. They're pretend woke. So they're like, they're like, oh, man, the pay gap, and then the audience goes crazy or whatever. And it's like, yeah, but if you look at the plot of this, it's implying that it's easier for women because this man couldn't get work, and then he dresses as a woman, and now it's easier. So are you woke or are you not woke? Like, <laughs> like you know what it feels like? It feels like some guy, like some Todd Phillips motherfucker, wrote this first, like, couple drafts of the musical. Then he let his female friend read it over, and she's like, um, I don't know how to help maybe mention the pay gap or something? Make it woke so people don't roast you on Twitter. (laughs) Like, that is honestly one of the things that did happen with this musical. (laughs) Because it is, the entire creative team is all guys. David Yazbek, Robert Horn, um, all of them were all just a bunch of dudes. And in the first draft, the ending is like, I think his last line is like, I, I, was, I learned to be great as Dorothy, and I gotta learn to do it without the dress. You met, that's kind of the really dumb thing. Gotta take off the training wheels. <laughs> well, the original line was, I... <laughs> I learned to be a good person as Dorothy. Can you help me learn to do it without the dress? And they're like, why does he need a woman's help to become a human being? Like, that is not a responsibility you have to put onto her. And that was a female reading the script and being like, all right, that, that's a big change you need to make there. All right, all right. I got a pitch for this, all right? All you, right. Want, you want to make your, your woke musical um, about uh, a person who cross-dresses and, and pretends to be the other. Do a gender switch of the movie. It's a woman. Like it's a woman dressing as a man to get easier roles. That's very Shakespearean. Like I feel like that that works a lot better. There's a lot more comedy to be made of it. And it's already been done for sure. And I mean, I don't know what exactly the moral <laughs> would be, if any. I, and I don't really give a shit. But at least you wouldn't have this weird subtext where it's like it's easier for women because I mean, he gets the job and easily as a woman like no problem Mm -hmm. um and then he becomes so successful like instantaneously as a woman and like he couldn't find any of that as a man it's like okay but you you have that subtext but then you're also trying to throw in like lines about like oh feminism and oh don't roast me on twitter please please don't do that please please don't say that i'm not woke on twitter (laughs) (laughs) don't tell andrew he's not woke on twitter he'll cry please don't do it please (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but no back to like tootsie the producers hubris on this show so they had a really successful first couple of weeks so and they the only show that was really in competition to them and that was new was beetlejuice which was floundering pretty well early on so they bought like 10 months in advance like at that theater which i don't remember what it was i think it was like the walter kerr maybe let me double check that um, content is great, guys. Like it's wonderful. Um, the Marquee Theater. I was wrong, but basically, it began in April, and they had it play through January fifth of twenty twenty, which is ridiculous for me to think about because at the end they were just playing to empty houses because Beetlejuice had a sudden resurgence because of how well they performed at the Tonys. I mean, deservedly, Beetlejuice is funny. <laughs> You yeah. know, in, in like a family kind of way, but like this should have been funny in like a family kind of way, but instead it's just kind of, it's just so lame. It's like, you, you, it's almost like the jokes want a laugh track, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing about the jokes here is I feel like they wanted to be as edgy as Beetlejuice and say what we will about Beetlejuice. It's a family show that everyone can see, but it has edge to it. A little bit. It's it's a little morbid, I suppose. I think it's like sexually morbid and a little bit darker. It's got and all some that. darker stuff, but I wouldn't say. I mean, 
Compare that to, like, Book of Mormon, and I don't think it even comes close, but... I mean, no. <laughs> Compare that to Avenue Q, and it doesn't come close and all yeah. that, too. Yeah. But this, I don't know who... I don't have a musical to compare this to, except maybe Something Rotten, but Something Rotten at least was original. Something Rotten was original, and it had a... It played a lot of jokes off the setting, which was this strange, like, setting that they were doing, which is, like, Shakespearean, but not really. And that's kind of funny. And this doesn't have anything. This is literally, this could have been Friends the Musical and just drop the stuff with the dress and, and then, you know, have Ross come out. And <laughs> <clears throat> All right, Andrew, <laughs> since we're talking about the humor in the show, was there anything you found funny? Dead, Andrew just lost dead, dead every silence bit of light. for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew lost all bit of light in his eyes. <laughs> I'm like trying to actually think of like one. Andrew just finished watching this. I just watched this, and I'm trying to think of like one part. The part I think, and it was entirely just the guy's performance. But when his agent comes in and sees Dorothy and is like, "Oh, I'm a big fan," and then he opens the door slow, that was like chuckle. Like oh, I guess that's okay. <laughs> um, that was about it. <laughs> Can I? Say, like, and I, this is a little bit of a spoiler for the song section, but I don't really see myself talking about this as a song. Go ahead. But his female friends, I think her name was... Sandy. Sandy. It was it's, uh, Annie's dog. <laughs> all, of her, <laughs> all of her patter songs I thought were really good. Like, where she's just describing her day. Like, those are my kind of humor, where it's just like... I thought that was really well done. I think the songs themselves are effective. I think the music is pretty much okay to like slightly above average through the entire show yeah like i don't think there's any like clunkers in the songs no there was nothing that i'm like please make this stop you know <laughs> even some great musicals have songs that i'm like all right this is going on a bit too long <laughs> <laughs> yeah hello dolly yeah hello dolly has a few songs that are like eight minutes long that really don't need to be <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think that her, her, her as a character, she makes me laugh and I find her funny. She's barely, barely in it though. Yeah. I want the musical to be about her. Why isn't this about a struggling actress? It say is. Will, it is about will. a struggling actress. It's Fuck about you. Dorothy. Fuck you. <laughs> it's, I want like the best parts of the last five years is Kathy trying to be an actress. Like that is the most fun part of that musical. <sighs> It could have been better. I think his friend is sometimes a little funny. I I mean, they won't go too far with him. Like he has the you he's in it. it a, up he's in it a lot for some reason. But he has the song where it's just like you fucked it up, and like it's just one note. It is one note. There's no development once that is. He is a one note character and a one note like songs. Like yeah, but he's in it all the time. Yeah, because he need Dorothy needs someone to talk to. Yeah. And that's the problem with these, like, liars. he's played by my favorite fucking actor in the world in the movie, um, Bill Murray. You know how much I fucking love Bill Murray, don't you? I like Bill Murray, but I've never seen Great. I'm, Tootsie. I'm fucking glad you love Bill Murray. He's really good in, like, Groundhog Day and Ghostbusters. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he's fine. I like him. He's got a very dry delivery. Um, What were we talking about? Jeff? Yeah. My name's Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh my God. Yeah, he's kind of bland as a character. Did any of the theatery references like make you chuckle? Because I feel like that's like the one time they pander to like the theater crowd, and none of them were funny. I mean, I, the only real theater references I remember is when Dorothy's like, "I'm gonna play all the big roles," and they're like, "Oh, Mama Rose," and oh, whatever. Yeah, and that's not funny, and I don't know why that's not funny. <laughs> It's not funny because it's not a joke. It's just like, those are the big roles. I mean, you're right. <laughs> you ain't wrong. <laughs> uh, can I just say one thing positive about the storytelling before we move on to a mid-show announcement? Um, sure. I think the emotional moments work really well. I think when it's trying to be sincere, the show is pretty good. Like when Dorothy, like, mouth kisses uh, Julie for no reason, like, out of nowhere? No. No, that was bad. You don't, you didn't like that part? No, I did not you like weren't that a, part. You weren't a fan of that part? What about the time when Julie comes in and she's like, all right, I'm down to be a lesbian with you. Get your clothes off. Let's have sex. I mean, what about that part? I think that is the closest thing this show got to being clever in the book. Where I was like, oh, fuck, I didn't see that coming. 
I mean, I I totally saw that coming. Cause really? Because it, it's part of the liar story. Now he has to lie again. What does he do? Now he, the lie is that he's the woman and that he the woman likes it, her, and now she's buying into that lie. So he has to lie again to fix it. And 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 it just it just plays into the whole lying thing. Anything, yeah, but, anything to force him to to have to tell another lie. I guess I didn't see it coming because I was like, oh, you, you're gonna want to be with this old, old, ugly white woman. I mean, I would. Really? What about the guy that tattooed? That that, that was like they wanted that joke to land, but that was like something out of Drake no, and Josh. No, no. That that is that is a joke that I would you'd expect to see on Nickelodeon, like one of their live action shows. It was that lame. Did you notice that the girl that played Julie was also Sandy from SpongeBob? I did not notice musical? that. I did not notice that. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, she's really good in the show. I think like when she has her moment to tell like her sad life story, I think that really works too. Like when you give her the the bits, like her and um fucking Michael's friend they they hold the show up and make it not complete garbage. Yeah. But she was better in SpongeBob. I mean, everything was better in SpongeBob. SpongeBob was a funny SpongeBob was funnier. There was more funny jokes. Yeah, there was more <laughs> funny jokes in SpongeBob. SpongeBob actually had set design. A lot of really good set design. This one had one set and it was like the it was like Jerry Seinfeld's house. It was like I was expecting Kramer to like bust through the door. <laughs> Michael, you can't be you can't be wearing a dress. J- Jerry, what are you doing in here? <laughs> you, you gotta put the take the dress off. <laughs> but why do I have to take off my dress? It's, a, only way it's so much case. easier to get the work. <laughs> then then Jerry Seinfeld puts on like a high pitched voice. You're like dress. <laughs> is no one gonna is no one wondering why Dorothy is like, you know, a like low tenor <laughs> when she sings? There's like actual <laughs> singers out there that can sound like a female, like John Cozart and like a bunch, like a bunch of other people. They can sing like with a voice. Chris Colfer would have been a good choice, but no, you go for Santino Fontuna, who sounds like oh, I am Prince Hans of the Arendelle. Yeah. Did you know he was that guy? Um. You know what? It's expected. You know, it's fine. Plays the worst. That's the plays the ultimate worst, uh, liar, liar revealed story. I I hate. Does he do anything besides lie? This actor is lying to us at all times. Um, he was on a TV show called Crazy Ex Girlfriend. He left after the first season, and then his character comes back again in the fourth season, played by a different actor. Another lie, huh? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And and it's it's like negligible. It's the same fucking performance just by another bland white actor. Oh, sorry to interrupt you in the middle of the show, but we've got a shill at you. Andrew, talk about Patreon and list our patrons for us. Uh, Patreon is where you can go to donate to us and get a little bit of extra content like full commentaries, after parties for certain episodes, things like that. Um, our current patrons are Stephanie L., Terry Needleman, Max Lunig, Benjamin Lira, Lily Ackles, Mackenzie Horner, John Donna, Taryn the Duck, Melissa Goldman, Jess Lightning, Ewan Cassidy, Haley McDonald, Tess Gear, Colin McLeod, Fire September, Mina Maniri, Monica Thoreau, Brent Black, Al- uh, oh, I skipped one, Haley Murray, pardon me, Alice in Wonderland, B-Way Flicks, Michael Johan, Nathaniel Stanley, uh, Stacey Coombe, Joseph Evans Green, Luna Rocks 222, uh, Ure- Uregel Dro Witter, pardon me, that's a harder one. William Want and Carrie Ahern, we love you all. Even if I can't pronounce your name, I still love you on a, a fundamental level. You know, level. when you guys become our patrons, you should send us like a pronunciation guide. Don't actually do that. It's funnier if I pronounce it wrong. It 100% <laughs> is. <laughs> Except if you're Mina Maniri. She, she doesn't like that. I'm sorry, Moroni. The Angel Moroni. But these folks <laughs> give us a little extra financial support that helps us keep the lights on here at Musicals with Cheese. If you'd like to join them in supporting us and get tons of fun perks, such as patron-only commentaries or episodes a day early or even earlier, come join us over at Patreon. All right, Andrew, you ready to get back to the show? Yes. Realize the calendar inside your head is running out of pages. What do you do if you can see the odds are good? You'll never be the person you've been trying for for ages. Is it luck? Is it fate? Is it something that you wait? Like an overwhelming plate of humble pie? 
what are you doing? Everything you wanted more than life itself is laughing at you, calling you a jerk. What do you do? You make it work. What are you doing when everything is happening, but everything is happening to everybody but you? All of the phonies, frauds, and fakes are getting jobs and getting breaks and eating steaks, but nobody will touch you. Are you haunted by the fact all you want to do is act? And it's all you want to do until you die. Bashing away at the same old door, your arms are tired, your fists are sore, the patience you've got left is wearing thin. What do you do? You kick it in. So what do you think about Michael's god-awful I Want song, which is What Do You Do? I'm I'm struggling to even recall. <laughs> <laughs> It is like the most bland. Like if I didn't, it is the song that I would use to like sum up the sound in my head when I think of male hubris, which is like this bouncy, like almost militaristic number. Like, what do you do when you gotta do these things? Oh, what do you do when do 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 do? do? I'm gonna dress up like a woman. Dress up like a woman. <sighs> it's not yeah. very good. It isn't, and. <laughs> I don't understand his want aside from like I'm I'm gonna do what he wants I'm, to be I'm an actor. Do. He wants to be a successful actor. Successful, like not good. Like the thing is, is he a good actor? Is the question. We never really see him act. I guess we, I, we do when he's I mean, Dorothy, unless you consider him pretending to be Dorothy to be acting. In which case, you do. Um, but I would not call that acting. I would call that lying. What is the difference between acting and lying? Acting, uh, the people watching you know that you're pretending to be something. Lying, you don't tell them. It's like. Would you consider Andy Kaufman's work um, acting or lying? It's acting because you know what he's doing in, on some level. On some level, okay. Yeah, whereas if, if he went out in public and just on the sidewalk walked up to somebody and just started doing that, then it would be bit of diarrhea on their face. Yeah, it it would be a little different, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess, but I don't. The thing is, with usual characters, let's take once on the Sion because we just did that. Yeah, that character, um, of Timun, um, you understand what she wants, why she wants it, and all that nonsense. And she's also very compelling and all that, and we want to see her be successful. How? Ha- what do we want to see of Michael? What what do we want to see of Michael to be successful? I want to see Michael come over to my house and stomp these dogs' heads in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fair. Uh, what do we want to see to see Michael see be successful? Like, why do we want to see Michael be successful? It's one thing to have a protagonist we don't like and we want to see fail. But in the end, he doesn't fail, is the thing. Yeah, so it's like the very first scene you see him... Um, he's already kind of just being a pretentious douche, <laughs> you know, the first scene you see him, he's like, oh, well, I gave my character a backstory and, um, he, he wouldn't do that. He wouldn't even be singing this song. It's like, just, just shut up. <laughs> just go away. <laughs> I, I feel like this musical is trying to have a framework very similar to Groundhog Day. Um, the musical, not the movie, because fuck Bill Murray. Um, where even in that one, even if we don't like Phil Connors as a character, we understand he doesn't want to be stuck in the middle of the cold. He wants to be back at home doing his easy work. Like on a on a spiritual level, we all kind of get that, even though we don't really love Phil Connors as a person. Michael, we don't all like ruin all of our relationships and then blame other people for it. Psychopaths do that, and so do internet personalities, and nobody else. Yeah, and I mean, psychopaths and internet personalities are basically the same thing, so... Yes, especially <laughs> if you're... Yeah, yeah. Especially if you run a podcast about musical theater, like we exactly. do. Exactly, exactly. We're both terrible. We're both, like, we're Patrick Bateman ending it up, we just look at ourselves... I go out on we... the street and I tell people, you don't have a podcast, I can't relate to you. And then, I, and then I stab them to death. How many patrons do you have? To play to you? If they have anything less than us, I kill them. And if they have anything more than us, I also kill them. Because I'm jealous. <laughs> I give you your trust. I give you my word. I won't let you down. Please make the right choice. 
remember my voice, I won't let you down. Just give it some thought. I love you a lot. I won't let you down. We talk about the big song, the one that they used to market the fuck out of the show. I won't let you down, which they frame as like this very like this big moment for Dorothy as a character, but really it's just an audition piece. Yeah, it's like in uh, it's like in High School Musical when they when they sing bop 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 to the top, um, or breaking free, or, or yeah, or breaking free, or really any other song in High School Musical because really none of them are are sung plot wise. So um, get your head in the game. Fair, fair. That's that's one. Um, I thought you were my fairy tale, a dream when I'm not sleeping. That's that's. It's it's a jungle out there. It is. <laughs> <laughs> you listen to the commentary, guys. You're missing out. Um, but yeah, this is literally. She just comes in. Well, he just comes in. He never actually identifies as a woman, so it's always a he, right? No, he is not transgender. He is a he. He is a fucking imposter. He's an, an imposter. Asshole. He's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Dorsey is a monster. <laughs> oh, then he just switched his names. <laughs> how, does, how, that, how does nobody see that? Okay, so are you Delilah Andrews? I mean, I, I suppose that's probably what I would end up as, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if we're doing what he did, which is just take his last name, make it kind of feel like a lady's name. So Delilah Matthews, or De Delilah Andrews. I want to take my middle name, John, and put that in the front, and then do Julie, and I'd be Julie Andrews. Julie? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, I'm sure unions would have no problem with that whatsoever. Well, not after I tell them my middle name, Andrea. <laughs> um, no, 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 no. What you should do is you should just call yourself, um, go by your first um, syllable, you take the Ann, and then you put Vanessa and Hudgens between it, and then you got <laughs> Vanessa and Hudgens. <laughs> so yeah, you. I Won't Let You Down is a pointless song and it has no plot relevance, yet they still frame it as if it's like this really impressive number because Santino Fantuna has to go up there and sing in a high register. It's weird that this woman sings entirely in falsetto. I won't let you down. <laughs> I can do it. Um, yeah, there's not really much to say about that song other than... There's another thing. Like, the reason why Mrs. Doubtfire kind of works, and I know this is really, like, ridiculous to bring up, is because Robin Williams is kind of a chubbier, squishy man, just in general. He's a s short, squishy guy. It's easier to mold that fat into what you want it to be. Whereas <laughs> Santino Fortuna, <laughs> Fortuna um, he's like this really built, like, really strong muscular guy. Then you just put, like, lady tits on him, and he's just, like, a really insanely, like, ripped lady. Yeah. In, a, like, a granny dress. With, like, with like a, you know, chiseled chin. Like, yeah. does nobody mention that? You have <laughs> such a strong chin. You know that, Dorothy? Dorothy, you have a very, very strong chin. <laughs> Dorothy, are you seeing anyone later tonight? Because you got that strong chin. I could use that to open up a couple of bottles at a party tonight. There's just something about ladies, you know? You get that nice body and then that sexy goatee. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Andrew, if you just shaved your goatee, I bet you'd be more passable as a lady than fucking... You better believe it. Yeah, I mean... I've, I've, gotten, I've gotten the ladies on my date nights before. You know, the, the waitress walks over and says, Ladies, how can I? Oh. <laughs> I used to get that back when I was, like, on YouTube and had the really long blonde hair. Like, all the time. A uh, miss, miss. And then you turn around and say, What do you need? <laughs> and then they, like, they, have, like, a, voice they have, like, a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> they have a seizure and die. Played carousel on the road for the winter. From April to June, I toured cabaret. Then Mother Courage in stock in New England all summer. And John tried to call almost every day. He told me he wanted some kids and a wife. And 
That's when I realized this is my life. I made my choice, but I never expressed it. And when I got home, can you guess? Yeah, I guessed it. John was gone. Everything on the left of the closet was gone. His electric guitar and his amp and his car were gone. Just poof. There I was standing under a roof alone. And yes, my heart was almost broken. But I'd made my choice and I'd make it again. I want to talk about There Was John really briefly. I think this song really works. I think this song as like a good description of why Julie does what she does. It's Julie's explain, backstory. It, it's not even her backstory. It's her value set, which is <clears throat> I had this guy. I liked him a lot, but I wanted to do acting more. And you know what? When I came back, he wasn't there. And fuck him. I, now I get to live in a dressing room and do what I like. And it's framed as a positive thing. And it's very rare to see, like, hey, a woman working really hard framed positively, and it's not just something she has to overcome. That that was good. I, I mean, I don't, I'm trying not to give the show too much credit, but as far as credit goes, yeah, that was fine. Yeah. I mean, I don't think any of the songs are, like, really bad. bad, but it's like, I'm trying to think of anything that really stood out to me in this, really, not much. I mean, what is the Act 1 closer? Unstoppable. I know that one. Yeah. That was good. It's like, but like, what is it? I don't know. It doesn't seem like when they close act one, it doesn't really seem like there's any big moment that like needs to be resolved in act two. I disagree. It's just that um, he, he kisses her, which is weird, right? It was really weird. It's like sexual assault levels of weird. Yeah. I mean, it, it like, is still it is sexual assault just because he's dressed as a woman and everyone thinks he's a woman doesn't mean it's not sexual assault. <laughs> yeah, it's sexually assaulted by guys. I don't like it. It's not yeah, fun. It's not. It's not. It just just because they're the same uh, gender doesn't mean that they're uh, not sexual Intentions assault. Intentions on you that aren't unwanted are suddenly welcomed. Yeah. So it's not. That was, uh, you know. It, would name another musical that ends with a like cliffhanger of a sexual assault. I mean, I'm sure there is one. Oh, I am too, and I'm trying to rack my brain for it. I know the ending of Act 1 of Falsettos ends with, like, spousal abuse. I mean, what about, like, like Oklahoma? Doesn't doesn't the guy in the, in the ballet kind of do it? I mean, that's a dream. It's a dream, but it's in there. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I guess. <laughs> Great content we got here. Oklahoma's better than this. <laughs> what? I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, um, can I talk about one more number? And I think that's really all we need to talk about. Sure. Um, once again, it's another moment where I think that the emotions work pretty well. Sure. And that is Talk to Me, Dorothy, where Michael just looks in the mirror and asks the advice for the woman he's been from the woman he's been playing. Like, you are a better person than I am. Tell me what I'm supposed to do. And he basically ends with, like, I gotta stop being you and learn to, like, make myself as good as you are. And now, he, he realizes that he is Dorothy already, right? <laughs> it's not like a Jekyll and Hyde thing, no. It's more like a metaphorical storytelling thing. You're a better person than me. This scarecrow... Is that Pee Wee Herman? This scarecrow I built that is an entire entirely built from lies is a better person than the real me. <laughs> the scarecrow I built <laughs> built of lies? I mean, that is a fair description of what he d has done. I mean, uh, I don't think there's a better way to sum it up. It's better than Jeff sums it up. 
Not long ago, there was a man, an angry guy, awkwardly aging, committed, but kind of self-destructive, winding his way through life till ambition and circumstance conspired to deliver an opportunity no one except a megalomaniacal actor with nothing to really lose would consider. So then, of course, this guy puts, oh yeah, this guy is you, in case you were wondering, puts on a dress and wig and heels and actually gets the part, and surprisingly, everything goes very well. But then, and how do I say it? You fucked it up. You really fucked it up. You got applause, you got the fame, except it wasn't exactly for you. And now you're in love with a girl who thinks you're somebody that you're not. And in case you forgot, I'll tell you who you really are. You're the guy who fucked it up. You really fucked it up. Listen, Mike, I know when Mr. Opportunity comes tiptoeing and teasing, you're the kind of man who grabs him by the ball. How does Jeff sum it up? I don't you know. fucked it up. You really fucked it up oh yeah that's the uh that's like the opening of act two yeah i mean it has nothing to do with the plot which i guess is fine jeff is like the character that's supposed to be like oh the he's funny one he's funny and he's he's just he's straight to the point and down to earth but it's just like he doesn't really do anything <laughs> no a real friend would be like you're not going the fuck outside you're staying here and you're get this shit out of your head and just like smack the shit out of him too he's like stop it stab it Here's what you're gonna do to solve this Dorothy problem. Don't ever do it again. Ever. <laughs> ever. It was a mistake, and you should feel bad. Yeah, and if everyone, anyone calls asking where Dorothy is, uh, you answer and she you say- She died. She dies. She's dead. She's gone forever. <laughs> I killed her. <laughs> <laughs> because, um, I mean, what kind of friend lets their friend just continue to dig a hole for themselves like this? I mean- you you've probably done it before to me. I mean, I dig myself into a lot of stupid holes. I don't think so. I mean, there was that one time where well, we won't go into that. <laughs> Not on Mike. <laughs> 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 Jess, please. Let's not talk about that. Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> but no, I think that moment is done pretty well. Uh, you mean Jeff sums it up? No, not that moment. Not talk to me, Dorothy. Because I'm, that's like, oh, I get the emotions here, and I think it's effective. Um, yeah. Uh, what's your overall thoughts on this? Because honestly, I don't think I have anything left to say. Uh, I think that this musical is bad. <laughs> I don't think that it's not without merit, but I think it's very, very bad, unhealthy, unproductive, and just overall piss-poor effort. I think it's very very bland it's it's extremely like you know white bread nothing special going on just bare bones easy watching and i think if you are and i don't think this is anyone in our audience but if you are over 50 years old and want to fall asleep in a theater and have the money to spend this is probably the perfect thing to watch <laughs> i mean you're not wrong <laughs> You might wake up and and chuckle like once and then fall back asleep, you know? It's that <laughs> it's that kind of that kind of show. You know, like if you fall asleep and then you wake up and you're like, "Oh, that's a man in a dress." <laughs> and then you fall back asleep, you know? This is like the blandest minstrel show I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just okay. I mean, as far as a cheese rating, I think the only cheese I could possibly give it is like one of those craft singles. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah, it's, it's wrapped up in plastic, and it, it tastes like rubber. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm going to go um, a little more extravagant. Um, doesn't deserve it, Jess. It doesn't what? deserve it, Jess. <laughs> um, yeah, I deserve it. I'm good enough. After watching Tootsie, I deserve a little bit of something good. Sure. So I am giving this cheesecake made of Tootsie Rolls, which is a real thing. I mean, that's fantastic, but I don't think that this show deserves cheesecake <laughs> <laughs> i think but this show deserves maybe like uh grilled cheese at best <laughs> grilled cheese with a tootsie roll put in the center of it. yeah but you know you can give a cheesecake with tootsies i mean that's that's funny i get the pun jess you do did you did you like the pun i get the pun you get the pun i understand your <laughs> joke andrew <laughs> since we're here how would you muppetize this? All right, muppetize. Um, let's see. Uh, Julie, Miss Piggy. 
Avi. Wait, I, maybe Michael should be Miss Piggy. Michael, I think, is Kermit. <gasps> yeah, he is the type to get himself in too deep. He gets in and too Jeff deep. And Jeff is Gonzo. Uh, Jeff, Jeff is Fozzie. Yeah, all right. Okay, Jeff is Fozzie. The pieces are coming together. Gonzo is the director. Um, He's, like, out on the stage. He's like, I'm great, and I'm awesome, and he's got his, like, big thing. More explosions, more cannonballs. Yeah, and then he's got, like, chickens all around him. Um, the... And he doesn't understand why people find um, Dorothy so attractive because she's not a chicken. Sandy? I don't know who Sandy is. Um, She's the funny gr- friend girl, girl who is a friend. I know who she is. I don't know who the Muppet would be. Um, why don't we have that be celebrity actress? That could be a celebrity guest. I could see that. Um, who's friends with have... friends with Kermit and Fozzie, and she comes over and yeah, like hi guys, and it's a Shanti or something. Yeah, and then I also think um the person who tattoos their chest is also a celebrity guest. Yeah, that'd be Steve Martin or something. He's just so in love with Kermit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then the producer character. Um, honestly, I would probably cast that as someone kind of scary, um, like an Uncle Death kind of thing. Yeah. Um, or, yeah, no, I'd see that. And then the agent. That's a celebrity. That's also, I think that's also a celebrity guest. That's Molly Shannon or something. Like anybody who has like two scenes is a celebrity usually, you know? Exactly. Like they can pop up every now and then. It's Queen Latifah or David Allen Greer or something like that. Jeffrey yeah. Tamor. And I think that this one, I think we can fully cast. I think that's the Muppetization I'm going to go with. Yeah, I think that would be good. No, I'd watch that. I'd wa- I think it would be more entertaining than what we got. Yeah. Um. Now I'm just wondering when we get Glenn or Glenda the musical. You know. Honestly, Ed Wood the musical, like, because I don't think you can do like a full like. Glenn or Glenda musical, there's not enough content there. <laughs> <laughs> there's not much content at all. <laughs> no, but you could do, like, how Ed Wood does, and you could have, like, a Bride of the Adam, Glenn or Glenda, or Plan 9 musical, where it's, like, three chunks. Yeah, I could see, like, maybe, like, an episodic kind of thing. Like, yeah. have, like, a like a three-act some- structure of some way, and then have it be different shows. And each time you actually have Ed Wood come out and pitch it to you. All right, guys, here's what's going to happen. It's going to it's a little cheaper than I expected, but you got to imagine it like uh, an octopus, a big octopus. Yeah, I'd watch that. That'd be fun. I think that'd be I don't think that'd like break any records or anything, but I'd see that. If it's funny enough, it might. But yeah. Well, well the thing is, you can't beat the Ed Wood movie. Yeah, but I would watch a musical of The Room though. I think that actually is ripe for being a musical. I think the problem with that would be it's going to be hard to put that kind of dialogue into song and have it still be funny. No, you'd take it word for word and the songs would just expand on one line of dialogue, kind of like how a whose line is it anyway? They got to stop and turn the last line into of dialogue into a song. Yeah. You're tearing me apart, Lisa. All right. Um we're, this Tootsie is so bland, we're not even talking about it anymore. That's that's how... But do you know who isn't bland? <laughs> Our patrons are definitely not bland. They are, no, they, they are, are not. Thank they you are guys pepper for Jack. watching us. They <laughs> are the best types of cheese. You are incredible. I love you all so much. Here's a kiss. From both your both your musical theater daddies over here. Musical theater daddies. I, I'm like that. That's, that's good. Yeah, call us your musical theater daddies. Don't call us that. <laughs> You got Daddy Andrew and you got Daddy Jess over here. Come sit on our lap. Uh, just call me Daddy Warbucks. Because he'll pay pay your abortion. Cause... Either way, thank you guys for listening to us. We're on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, at Musicals with Cheese. Our Twitter is at Cheesy Musicals. Our Patreon is Musicals with Cheese. Our Instagram is Musicals with Cheese. Our YouTube page is Musicals with Cheese. Shoot us an email at musicaltheaterlives at gmail.com. Our title card was created by the absolutely incredible, the fantabulous, the wonderful Jolene Casco. Go follow her on Instagram at Jolene Casco. All right, Andrew, is there anything else that um, Delilah Andrews has to say before we wrap this on up? No, I think that's about it. What are you doing after after the show here, Delilah? You you seeing anyone right now? No, I'm going back to being a man. What? (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys, we'll see you next time on Musicals with Cheese.